it's so much fun to watch and George is such a disaster and you think you know why does the devil have all the good screenwriters <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm Richard, and welcome to Contra Talk. I have a guest today, uh, Dr. Mark Coppinger. He is a father, husband, grandfather, uh, my one of my favorite seminary professors I've ever had um, at Southern Seminary. He also taught at Wheaton College, PhD from Vanderbilt, pastor, church planter, um, lots and lots of things. You were in the Army, right? <laughs> so we're going to be talking about a lot of different things today, um, church and state relations. We're going to be talking about the arts, Christianity, and um, the culture, aesthetics, and many other things. So, um, yeah, welcome to the show. Good to be with you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> or, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, so, I took a couple classes. I remember mm -hmm. the very first class I took was a Tuesday uh, night, Church and State Relations. Oh, yeah. Why don't yeah. you, I remember we read a huge thousand-page book. Right. You made us read most of right. it. That's right. Um, and... Mm -hmm. Why don't you just walk us through, you know, we've had a lot of Supreme Court decisions, right? Obergefell right. was a big one, 2015. Right. Of course, Roe v. Wade. Um, you know, the, the, the master, Masterpiece Cake Shop. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. should Christians handle the government? How should we deal with, you know, the government? A lot of people have been saying, Romans 13, i got to do whatever the government says. Right. Right, with the whole lockdowns and can't do church, can't sing. Right. And then there's other people that say, well, no, that's not a lawful government. I'm not going to do this or that um how how should we relate to the government yeah well well the of course covid brought a lot of this to the fore I mean, so you have john macarthur's church and you have churches in canada saying you've gone too far i mean clearly romans 13 says the default position is one of cooperation with the government in mm -hmm. other words here anarchy is not a christian option just lawlessness but there are limits i mean in fact it uh in our Declaration of Independence, uh, you know, uh, Thomas Jefferson said, you know, you don't throw these states off lightly. I mean, they, basically you have a duty to obey. However, with a long string of abuses, and he starts listing these things, quartering our troops and this and that. And so even at a certain point, I think revolution takes, uh, uh, is, is legitimate. But basically, our position is to cooperate and to go along as best we can. But, you know, there is that thing where you just say, look, you do what you got to do, but we, we can't go there. We can't, we can't do that. You know, these are very strange times, and I, but, I, but I think we actually, we have recourse at the ballot box. We have recourse in, in appealing to folks. And um, I have a son-in-law who um, clerked. He's, uh, he, he served in the Bush White House, and then he was, uh, got a degree from Harvard in law, and he clerked for a federal circuit court judge in D.C. who was a Trump appointee, you know? And so if you get people who appoint the right folks, uh, and this was a very good, very good fellow, mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, we have recourse. It's hard work. Um, and it's, it gets harder when social media and others say, oh, you can't, we're going to stifle that and stifle that and, and the like. And that, there's some interesting cases bubbling up there, like breaking these guys up and saying, you can't, yeah. you know, you're just the cat, your cat's yeah. ball for one particular party, which mm -hmm. is, which is crazy. But yeah, you know, things, things have really changed. I think after World War II, there were some pretty big changes. Um, you know, you had this case where against prayer in schools and, and, uh, uh, there was this case, this is a very interesting thing. It's a piece of legislation. Um, Lyndon Johnson was very irritated at, um, some of the Texas guys, conservatives, pushing against him. And so when he was a leader in the Senate, he came up with a piece of legislation, and I think it was just on a hand vote, and it was a writer to an IRS bill that basically said that you could not advocate a particular candidate from the pulpit. You mm -hmm. couldn't say, this is a good guy, you'd vote against him, and so forth. And like, okay, fine, whatever. Well, it turns out for the first 100 years of our our country you could do that the pulpit mm. was not limited interesting but he put that in so now we have like issues sort of things but again and again and again they've been encroaching on the churches and then they've been advancing uh agendas which are very very strange i mean you know just uh uh i, I remember i went to the defense of marriage uh uh group uh up in uh, dc we had the man i mean up in new york we had the manhattan declaration mm -hmm. and by this time uh, i think there were well over 20 states through referenda 
20 states had spoken out against gay marriage. Only, I think it was the New York legislature and the Massachusetts Supreme Court had said that it was all okay, it was cool, in fact, you may not be against it. And so it looked like there was this just groundswell of indignation in America against that, of solemnizing and treating it gay marriage as if it was the real deal. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, Obergefell came forward, and people were like, forget it, you know, it's just like Roe v. Wade. Like, okay, you states do your little things, you little puppies bark like you will, <laughs> but we're going to come down. And um, I keep thinking, I keep thinking they're they're going to provoke this great groundswell of, of people like, okay, that's enough. This is mm -hmm. insane. Guys, you know, guys who are competing in girls' track meets or something like that. Okay, that'll tear it. Now there'll be a great flood. And yet, it, it seems like half America has pretty well lost its mind. Yeah. Uh, they've been indoctrinated. So it's a tough slog. But I'm told, by the way, I've worked with guys in Europe uh, on Kairos Journal and some of these other projects, I'm told that over there, it's just so far gone. They consider America to be like in continual revival. I mean, they, you know, <laughs> wow. so uh, so we need to be glad about what we have and mm -hmm. the freedoms we have. But boy, it's a it's a terrible way right now. Terrible yeah. place. My goodness. Aesthetics. That was another course I took. Yeah. Uh, we talked about kitsch or kit kitsch, right. kitsch whatever. Yeah, kitsch. Yeah. Uh, you know that cheesy stuff. Yeah, yeah. Bloods for you and you know yeah. Christ is King, Burger King logo. Yeah. You know, just stuff that's like. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people don't know about aesthetics yeah. as far as just. Well, I mean, it, it's you hear it and you're like, I mean, mathematics, like what? What, yeah, what, yeah, are, you yeah. what are you trying to yeah, say? Yeah. What is aesthetics and and who are some people? I I have an idea of. Who I want to talk about, but sure. we'll see if you bring them up. But okay. just talk about aesthetics and why Christians should at least be aware of it. Maybe what you know somebody could pick up and read. Yeah. And um, yeah. Sure. Well, it's funny. Aesthetics kind of plays off the word anesthetics. I mean, if you have anesthetic, then you are insensate. Mm. That is, they knock you out. So it has to do with the the, the senses, and and there's a sense of beauty and form, and and uh, and and it's not just in painting or in physical physical things like that, but it could be in a narrative. Does it have pace? Is it boring? A sermon, yeah. you know, can be captivating, and and certainly the the power of the Holy Spirit is a, is a big deal there. But also, there are ways to make a sermon more engaging, a, an engaging introduction. Uh, as I said in uh, another setting, uh, put raisins in the oatmeal, have illustrations. Uh, otherwise, it just it just drags and drags if you're not careful. I mean, mm -hmm. God can use anything if it's the word, but you know, it's it's putting him to the test. It's throwing yourself off the temple to make this interesting, if, right. and so forth. But no, I mean, it, it strikes me that we're all we're all pretty sensitive to things like sunsets or this thing this thing looks pretty good or that beautiful valley or the smokies uh everywhere we go there are some beautiful places out i mean whether it's the piney woods of east texas or the flint hills of kansas or the rockies or the mm -hmm. the everglades and so the thing that the things that we savor uh show that we have an aesthetic sense and you know it's it's sometimes sometimes said uh, the heavens declare the glory of God and the cities declare the depravity of man <laughs> that, you know, generally speaking, when nature is doing its thing, God is wired us so that we can savor this. Now, in Chicago, where I lived 17 years, uh, you can really make some things pretty ugly. I mean, you can have concertina wire by the L stops with bags from Jewel Grocery flopping in the <laughs> flopping in the wind and crumbling curbs and mangy dogs and yeah. and graffiti smelly and, graffiti and, yeah. and overflowing dumpsters with yeah. this and that. Oil and gas. Yeah, you can make things nasty. But it is interesting, in the middle of all this, you'll have stops like uh, Forest Park and Bryn Mawr and... Uh, Melrose and Ravenswood, mm. even though we're <laughs> in the midst of some pretty tacky stuff, we still have that hunger, I guess you could say, for Eden and the like. If you if you kind of retreat and say, well, I kind of like Norman Rockwell, and that was a moving thing, the yeah. grandma and the little boy praying, and the, the dear, well, you're a Philistine. And, and they'll do the same, <laughs> you know, they'll do the same, and I mean, some will say Thomas K Kincaid is... Is too smarmy or, yeah, or what have a you, kitschy or, or whatever, the yeah. kitschy or precious moments chapel or something. Um, but some will say, I just want realistic, realistic stuff. I want it. It needs to look like a dog. If you're painting a dog. Yeah. But there's look, I mean, this is, I don't know. This shirt is, I think looks pretty good. 
And what does it represent? So, yeah. Are these fields in Iowa? You know, you've got <laughs> yeah, you've right. got stripes. Yeah, just on stripes. There. This is these are yeah. lanes on a highway, right? Lanes or in, those in Los furrows Angeles. in a field or something. <laughs> I mean, no, it's the juxtaposition of color. Yeah, it's the line, and and they're they're actually little laws for how you might do this or that. But uh, but yeah, we it turns out you don't want to be insensate. Look, I mean, God gave us all kinds of capacities. Uh, he gave us reason. If you never reason you know, it's all just feeling, then you've not been a steward of your reason. God mm -hmm. gives us physicality. If you just sit on a couch and you eat ding-dongs and watch Home Shopping Network till you weigh 500 pounds, then you've not been a good steward of your body. Mm -hmm. Well, he's given us, um, I, I think, the capacity, uh, the wiring, the inclination to enjoy good stories or beautiful places or interesting music and rhyme and and the like and if you're just totally indifferent to that it just seems odd to me yeah i mean when we lived in chicago and we have wonderful friends out in the suburbs in our church and some would be transferred in there from say missouri for three years to work in the, in the city and they would never go into the art institute of chicago or they would never go you know into like the field museum or or even the planetarium Were they believers yeah, they were believers. Yeah. yeah, but it was just no. That's that's the the big city, or that's not really our thing. Mm -hmm. And so they would stay out there and grill, and you know what have you. And it's like, boy, there really is something big out there. Or is it like, hey, I'm going to stretch myself a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to get out there and expose myself. And you might find that you that you don't like it. I don't like opera very much. Um, some, somebody <laughs> said it's like a wedding, bad drama with bad music. Uh, you know, <laughs> music you wouldn't just listen to, and then the play. The, right. And I mean, that's snarky, and yeah, some of it's no, very I, good. I but I just, to me, it just seems like a big, overblown, whatever. Hmm. Uh, I'd much rather hear, you know, Willie Nelson or, or, uh, I mean, not just. I live in Nashville now, but of course, he's he's more of a Texas guy. But I'd I'd rather hear. Dolly Parton sing "Coat of Many Colors" and or uh, or 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 some symphonic moody like yeah. La Mer or something like that um, to going to an opera. So you find out what you really like the most. I love American painters. I love John Singer Sargent, George Bellows, and and a lot of these guys more than I like Kandinsky or some of the German expressionists or what have you. But I can still appreciate, like, oh, there's one of those guys. There's one of those guys. It's a little bit like guys like baseball. I, I remember I was on a, uh, or, or, or sports, I was on a raft trip with Answers in Genesis mm -hmm. with Russ Fuller. And as we were going down this thing, somehow we got off on football. And I think he could name every second string player on the Cleveland Browns or something. It was insane. <laughs> and he just, and, and I could, I could do that with the Titans and just yeah. talk about, okay. And Tannehill came on and then you've got this guy and so forth and his record. And here's the guy who's the second level linebacker and, and the like middle linebacker. And you get into things Well, you can get in, you can get into the arts. Yeah. And, and aesthetics in general is just what the study of beauty. You would yeah. say, or just... And you know, that's an interesting thing because I'm writing right, right now. We had a, we had a degree in theology and the arts and uh, it turns out that about a dozen of the guys who did PhDs with me uh, were coming together and we have a book contract to turn out something called um, Apologetical Aesthetics. Mm -hmm. and, and, there are, and we're saying that doing aesthetics and studying the arts points to God. And a lot of it keys to beauty. That, you know, like, okay, are you saying that just out of like one-celled, uh, organisms in the primordial soup somehow you crash along crash along and the next thing you know you've got uh, the Taj Mahal or, or <laughs> you know or something like that I mean really yeah and so we say actually it's much more explainable in terms of, of beauty in terms of a benevolent God and, and the like but here's an interesting thing um, we focus so much on beauty and in fact there's this big thing now about the transcendentals it's mm -hmm. truth goodness and beauty right and they want to say those are, they go together, you know, and God is truthful and good and beautiful and the like. I only find like one verse that really says God is beautiful. I think they put it up to, it's almost like a Greek thing. I think if I'm going to put in the big three, I'm going to put love over here mm. instead of beauty. So I think you can become an aesthete where that's just as important to you uh, as, as anything. However, yes, but here's the deal. A lot of really good craftsmanship 
in the arts is for the ugly. You might have a picture of hell by a Hieronymus Bosch. Or let's go, let's go to modern uh, filmmaking. Jabba the Hutt. I mean, that's an ingenious character. Yeah. I mean, you know, how about Schmeagel? Like the go <laughs> Gollum, yeah. you know? I yeah. mean, he is deliciously ugly. Yeah. And that is well-crafted, too. But that's still so, a good aesthetic, right? It's not. It's a good aesthetic, even though it's, it's not, ugly. It's not beauty, but right. it's 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 you know, or even even like in Great Expectations, Miss Havisham, mm -hmm. that she's such a creepy character, and so that which has, I would say, and people say this sometimes. They'll say, "Oh, the crucifixion, it's beautiful. It's ugly, but it's beautiful." Mm -hmm. No, it's not. It's really ugly. I mean, yeah. it's that's the point of the thing. It was awful. The narrative is beautiful. Right. That is, the okay. story is beautiful, but uh, but I think the spectacle of the slaughter of our Savior is is profoundly ugly, and that has uh, it's arresting, yeah. you know. So I think there's a whole variety of things that fall under aesthetics. Yeah. So you would say then, like to Christians who would say, "Well, I, you know, I don't really care about going to a museum or yeah. or something like that," but maybe they don't care much about painting or sculptures or something or poetry but what about um film what about yeah. movies what about yeah. books and things would you say that still falls into the line of, of aesthetics as well oh sure i mean of course you have really hard hard core philosophical prose i mean you could be reading david hume's arguments you know against god and design or you could read nietzsche and and the like and yet even even the philosophical prose can be artful or not. I mean, mm -hmm. the guys like William James and and Hume, um, you know, they write well. Where others are just so ponderous and they're just so boring and jargonish and and the like. But no aesthetics. Look, for one thing, I mean, some people say you have more senses. You have an eternal internal sense of pain and the like. But I mean, let's just say you've got taste, gustatory, auditory olfactory that is the smell mm -hmm. tactual and visual and for each of these things i mean with with smell and taste i mean you you've worked with with uh, food service and and and, uh, and groceries and so forth and you know you have arresting spices and tastes mm -hmm. that are delightful and the sound of of symphonies or uh, you know the sight of sculpture or painting and and uh it's uh and and actually just the texture of of velvet or something rough. Mm -hmm. I mean, and so in all of these areas, uh, aesthetics has a play. And then also in the imagination, just in terms of the story, you know, you'll have the, the you know, the development, the crisis, the denouement and the like, and a story has pace. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. Um, we, I was in a book club. We did a book club. It was a few years ago, right? And um, I think we read, what was it? Shoe Dog? Yeah, the, yeah, the oh Nike yeah. Guy. I think I was in the yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, it was you. You led sure. that. It was what the common common wheel project or whatever. It was, it was a common wheel project on campus, and Shoe Dog was the the origin of Nike yeah. shoes. You know, Phil Knight. And so, and something like that is is fascinating because you can see, um, you can see a man who's you know not a believer, right? right? But he's nevertheless still. Being creative, right? yeah, and he's, absolutely. And he's striving for absolutely. hard work and, and determination and other things. Yeah. Um, what would you say to someone, you know, a Christian, old, young, man, woman, whatever, <laughs> yeah. who would say, oh, "Why would you? That's that's a pagan book. Why no. would you read that? You shouldn't. Yeah. You shouldn't read that. You shouldn't go to those types of movies. You shouldn't do those types of things. Yeah. You know, that's just sin. I mean, look at he used the curse word here. They're drinking. They're right, this. Right. There's even a you know a lewd scene over here. What do you? T how do you? Um, reconcile <clears throat> how do you reconcile people that, that say that and or might even accuse you of like oh well you're just trying to be fleshly or you're just you know yeah. you should just read God's word you should go witness you should go do this and that yeah yeah how, well, how do you how do you well talk there, are, to that there are a number of things I mean I you know you've got in Philippians whatsoever things are true lovely a good report and the like and so if you're just uh, kind of absorbing the dark or, or or what have you then you've not been true to the stewardship of your own mind but to cut yourself off from this i mean that wasn't a particularly dark book that was just a fascinating book about a lost guy making it in business and yeah. his ups and downs and the like but for one thing in my discipline philosophy there have been a lot of christian philosophers but a lot of the guys we read aren't christian at all and they have been working really hard at undermining the faith 
But in apologetics, in which I'm in or have been in, and and a variety of other things, you're mixing it up with the guy. You're kind of your culture warriors, and you know. I mean, I look at some. I, by the way, you, I saw some. I forgot where it was. A documentary on um, like rap the other day, mm-hmm. and it's it's just so. I know hip hop and rap, and they're different different sorts of things, but but it was just so unfailingly dark and hateful and vile mm-hmm. and stuff. And and they keep saying, I'm just keeping it real. No, that's really not real. That's just like, that's like shadows in Plato's cave in terms of like <laughs> real reality. Yeah. That's just wallowing in the dark. And to call that real, then it's actually just sort of crippled and pathetic is what it is. Mm-hmm. But, but there is a place to know what rappers are doing, what atheists are arguing, uh, and the like. And, and by the way, I mean, Common Grace... Uh, Chariots of Fire was a great movie, I think. I yeah. mean, think when I was in seminary, I, I I I taught at Wheaton, and then I got called to the ministry, so I went back to seminary, and I was down at Southwestern, and they came and they gave us all free tickets. Uh, okay. They're kind of a screening, and we yeah. went out to I think Hewland Mall, and we're all sitting there, and we expected him because he was righteous in a sense, you know. Yeah. To like, okay, what's the next reel where he is found drunk with a prostitute or something, you know? Because that's how, and he stayed like wonderful. <laughs> to the end, we thought, wait a second. Probably not if it, it were made it today. Can't be. How, right. But Ian Charlson, who played, you know, and said, oh, Jenny, the Lord made me fast, and when I run, I feel his pleasure. Yeah. He's gay. Uh, you know? The guy. The, the guy. Oh, and wow. Gandalf is, too, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, those guys have a craft. And, you know, and, and sometimes, and by the way, they're making Christian films better and better, but sometimes they're so cheesy that I mean, yeah. what what the pagans do is they shortchange the godly. They don't they don't know really what it is to make like a godly, earnest, uh, complex churchman. Mm-hmm. You know, he's more like a cartoon guy. He's a deplorable. Yeah. But we can flip it, and we don't actually give the other guys their due because they're God's creation. They're not His children. They're His creation if they're mm-hmm. lost. But they can do some really, really skillful things. I even saw um, Kiefer Sutherland in something about a Japanese prison camp, and he was a godly guy in that. Hmm. But at any rate, uh, some of the really good things that you find out there, just, I don't know, just wonderful landscapes or or, uh, just really cool songs or symphonies can be made. I mean, Mozart was a mess. And yet, some of what you listen to to Mozart is good. So God's, God's got some folks who are very, very skillful out there. Mm-hmm. And as they say, you know, even a blind hog can find an acorn now and then. And so, <laughs> uh, all truth is God's truth. And as I'm reading along, and I, I mean, I was I was just speaking at at uh, Founders the other day, and um, I remember when I was in the army, I did 28 years of guard and reserve service, and was not really a threat to any of our enemies, but they let me stick around. <laughs> and one of the things we had to read, I think, in Command and General Staff College was The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Yeah. And Sun Tzu basically said, well, battle is like water running downhill. And that when it hits an obstacle, it goes around. It keeps finding a way. It adapts. And so it doesn't go bonk when it hits the boulder. Well, that's not a Christian argument. I mean, Paul... Paul will say, I'm, you know, I'm shipwrecked, I'm this, I'm this, and this, mm-hmm. and I keep going. But I use Sun Tzu to basically say, look, in your ministry, you'll have frustrations and letdowns and disappointments, your own, other people. Mm-hmm. and you'll, But don't go bonk. Find the next thing. Just keep keep going. So this is, this is the oddest thing. When I was a teaching assistant at Vanderbilt, um, we were reading Beyond Good and Evil by uh, Friedrich Nietzsche, a German philosopher. And Nietzsche, in one of these places, and he was as godless as can be, he would say, he said, those best moments, let's see, are, are when we regain or gain the courage to rechristen our evil as that which is best in us. Now, that is dark, you <laughs> wow. know, like you yeah. embrace it. Wow. But the funny thing <clears throat> is, in the midst of the conservative resurgence, when we were standing up for inerrancy, and they were calling us everything but saved. I mean, they mm-hmm. owned the Baptist press, they owned you know, the the commo offices in the various seminaries and all that. And, you know, we were bibliolatrists and we were this and scholastics and knuckle draggers and fundamentalists and all that. Yeah. Then after a while, it's like, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, please, no. And then after a while, it's like, okay, put it on my resume. You know, 
my best moment was when y'all called me the worst things because yeah. now apparently I shut down an alley and hit something, you know? <laughs> so now that's not going full Nietzsche, but there's a little bit of a kind of a cool irony you have in that. So it's funny what you can pick up from, from people, obviously some, some dangerous stuff, but, uh, you know, be sure you have your head sc screwed on straight when you're going into it. But, boy, it's fun to be a culture warrior. Yeah. You know. There is a hands-off, though. And, again, there's all sorts yeah. of sects, as it were, sure. Of, sure. of Christendom. And there's still very much, you know, KJV-only type folks, fundamentalist yeah. folks. Right. Uh, and, you know, I would say I am, and you probably are too, to a degree, a fundamentalist in the sense of, Orthodoxy. Believe the fundamentals, right? Yeah. You believe the fundamentals, but I think you know yeah. that got such a bad name; it's not so much used these days. Right? Um, even you know, evangelicals water down and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but you had mentioned Wheaton and your experience there, and yeah. even uh, King's College, you know, yeah. way back in the day. Yeah. And having some bans on yeah. entertainment. Talk about that a little sure. bit. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty much raised about, I mean, I, we were fairly comfortable with movies. And I'm as a kid, I would go see Davy Crockett or Sound of Music or whatever. We had this, uh, this little local theater. And my parents, as we would travel around, we'd go to the Art Institute of Detroit. And then my grandfather founded the Detroit Economic Club. And he was very mm -hmm. well off. And he sent us around the world when I was just coming out of high school on a six week tour. And so wow. we were at the Louvre and we were seeing uh, Kabuki theater in Japan and all kinds of stuff. So I, I just had that, that was just part of my, my comfort zone. So I go to Wheaton and uh, I'm as teaching, a prof, right? As a prof. Okay. And I'm teaching, no, I, I went to uh, Washita Baptist University in Arkansas That's where right. my dad taught. And then uh, Vandy for the degree, the PhD, and then to Wheaton. So anyway, I um, inherited aesthetics. The fellow who had taught it, he had moved on. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that's fun. I took aesthetics at, at, uh, at Vanderbilt. And then I discovered that, and I was, I was kind of a film enthusiast, and I discovered that I think it was 10, 15 years before I got there, you could not go to a You might not go to movies at mm -hmm. Whedon. Wow. And, um, and incidentally, my background, when, when I was coming out of Vanderbilt, uh, I was contacted, or I contacted King's College in Briarcliff Manor, New York. Now it's down in, in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, I was rocking along, I thought, pretty well. And then I found out that you couldn't go to movies or stage plays or musicals. And I thought, you're like an hour up the Hudson River from Broadway, and I can't see Sound of Music. And wow. and it was like, and so like the rich young ruler, I went away sorrowing. I just, you know, I thought, <laughs> wow, that sounded like a good job. But this, yeah. I just, that just seems odd to me. Huh. So anyway, at Whedon, um, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in there. And I found out in each of the arts, and I used the professors uh, from the arts. They would come in and speak to the class. Uh in fact, one of them, Harold Best, the dean of the conservatory, uh, I got to supervise a dissertation, my last one at Southern, uh, treating the work of Harold Best by a, a, a young lady who teaches at Carson Newman. But anyway, they would come in, and it turns out that in each of the arts, there was a flashpoint. So in music, it was jazz and rock. Mm. Uh, in uh, in uh, the visual arts or the tactile, tactile arts, it was uh, it was essentially nudity, uh, form, mm -hmm. form study. In theater, it was profanity, and, and so everything was just kind of, uh, you're walking on eggshells. And, and so, um, you know, the question is, okay, what businesses of Christian have going to see uh, Deer Hunter, for example, with, mm -hmm. with uh, you know, Robert De Niro and the like, because it's an R yeah. rated or something, and yeah. there's violence in this thing. And it turns out, I mean, some of just like, who cares? I mean, it's no big deal. But actually, there there are real dangers now. It struck me that I saw one film that was a PG that was more dangerous than some of the R movies. Yeah. One was called Same Time Next Year, and it was like I think Ellen Burstyn and Alan Alda happened to run each, into each other somewhere up at some Northern California place, and they had an affair, and then. And then they would meet again at the same time with the same sort of excuse, mm -hmm. uh, same time next year and the like. And there was no there was no nudity, nothing explicit, but it was just showing through. That was the, a PG movie. It was a P PG movie because wow. it showed through their just relationship and their conversation and hmm. looking at the pictures of their kids and stuff. That adultery could be kind of charming and sensitive and, and doable. Yeah. Very dangerous movie. Whereas yeah. 
I don't want to be in some kind of a um, crazy situation in, in Vietnam and with the R-rated thing. So it, it, those ratings were, were kind of weird. And, but here's the deal. I mean, there are rocks on both sides. And one can be, um, one can be like culturally detached. And, you know, that's okay, too. I mean, look, when I planted a church, when I planted a church in Evanston, we had Northwestern students and we had Moody students. And so at lunch, we would have lunch together. Sharon would fix lunch. And uh, she would bring crock pots full of stuff she'd prepared. And so we're sitting around the table. And someone might say, okay, let's name 10 Robert Duvall movies. And someone's saying, okay, you got, I've got The Natural and The Great Santini. And, and he was Boo Radley in, in uh, uh, oh, yeah. uh, you know, what, whatever it was. The, the Kill a Mockingbird. <laughs> Kill a Mockingbird. Canceled, canceled. And, yeah, and, and all, that kind of, yeah, all that kind of stuff. And The Apostle. And, and you could go on down the line. And some of them were just railing it off. Yeah. And then some of the others, others, in some cases homeschooled or in a movie, they would not know who Robert Duvall was. Mm. And it wasn't as though they would say, you worldly swine to those who knew, and it wasn't as though the Northwestern students, for the most part, would say, you pathetic little child, you know, like, but yeah, they... poor homeschool. Yeah, poor homeschool. <laughs> it's just like, we have different different interests and sort of callings. But here, here's the deal. Everything you get into, there's some real dangers to the soul. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was in the Army 28 years. I'm telling you what, when you're in basic training and you're walking along and you're singing Jody Calls and they can get really raw... Uh, army posts are located close to, um, you know, pawn shops, strip clubs, uh, all kind of gambling dens, whatever. And, uh, you're away from home and it's dangerous and stuff. So people yeah. get into crazy things there. I was just looking before we met tonight. I was just going through some of these, uh, political blogs and this and that and cultural blogs. And, you know, I can get steamed up and hate somebody a little too easily in some of these cases. And so... You get into politics, and mm -hmm. then next thing you're like, you're in this caucus and that, and we're going to campaign for so and so. Well, wait a second. Whoa, don't you know about? Yeah, but and it's someone says we, you're voting for the lesser two evil, evils. Uh, it's still evil, and said that's all I ever vote for is the lesser two evils. <laughs> so right. everywhere you yeah. go, there are dangers, and to to pick out the arts as as something that is is peculiarly, I mean, look if you if. Like watching MASH or something on TV with Alan Alda and all that sort of stuff. That was essentially an anti-Vietnam War thing. It was mm -hmm. Korea, but it was that's what they were doing. And I was an Army guy, and I resented some of the, the flip things they would say or how irreverently they would treat the, the military. Um, but if I were constantly, and this is what we do today, constantly like, oh, I'm offended, or no, 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 you yeah. know, then the next thing you know, then you're just, you're just Amish or something. Yeah. Like, okay, get a buggy, pull the power lines down, and uh, okay, that's good. Yeah. Now, here's the deal. The canary in the coal mine. You know the old thing about you bring a canary there, and if it stops singing... It's more sensitive to like whatever it was, methane gas or something. I think so, yeah. Then that means, oh, guys, be careful. The canary dropped dead. You've got to be very careful about whether you find yourself falling off in evangelism or prayer or love. For, you know, when the canary stops singing in terms of your, your walk and you don't have the joy of your faith and the readiness to share your faith and a hunger for the Word of God... Boy, you know, run forest. I mean, be very, very careful. And by the way, I would just say a lot of the good stuff out there is put out by non-believers. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, it's fascinating that you have. Um, there's real. There's no like, you know, Christian orthodontist or Christian carpenters mm. generally or Christian dishwashers or mm. whatever. But you have Christian musicians, Christian music christian movies i was in a christian film i did this then they, yeah. you know there's a christian podcast yeah. um there are certain things that they'll kind of tack christian onto which is it's fascinating to me in one sense because you think well what <laughs> like, yeah. why don't we do this with other things i guess yeah. but most of it is the creative mm -hmm. things and a lot of people um a lot of people even you know mentioned earlier with the yeah. master masterpiece cake shop right? yeah, or yeah, yeah. photography and you got to shoot our same-sex wedding and it's like i don't want to shoot your same-sex wedding uh that sort of thing or a bake a cake right. 
Uh, but it's 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 interesting. I remember a pastor, um, old pastor of mine. He would say he was more concerned about L- Little Mermaid than mm. Gladiator. Yeah, because you, know, you get Little Mermaid. It's a G movie. What came out in eighty yeah, nine? Yeah, and it was you know I was a little kid when it came out, but it's still a very common ish movie. You yeah, know, yeah. more so than some of the other ones as far as old Disney goes. Yeah, and you know she. She disobeys her dad. She gets everything, everything she wants. Yeah. Uh, you know, goes up on land and all that, and and then it's superficial. It's just, oh, he's beautiful. She's beautiful. He's right. pretty. And he's handsome. And kiss the girl, and and they're a little, you know, so magical and great. And it's like, but parents, are are we seeing this? Like, yeah. are we not paying attention to this? This is completely empty. Yeah. This is, and he, she disobeys her dad, and she gets what she yeah. wants. Yeah. Now, obviously, there's Ursula and the whole thing, but. <laughs> I don't even know how I remember all this because I haven't seen this movie in years and years. Yeah. But, you know, you look at Gladiator and there's this more redemption and there's the raw nature of, of the Roman Empire right. and the brutality of, of killing and so on. Yeah. It's, I just find it fascinating. No, it's... And by the way, I, it is, it's very powerful stuff. I mean, the movies, they're kind of like crack in a way. I mean, you, you know, <laughs> you you can really... You know, they... They can draw you in, and then you almost you lose track of whether or not this is reality or not, and that's mm. when they're really doing doing their art well. And it's very very powerful stuff, and you you really do have to be on your guard. And some of the more some of the more subtle stuff, I mean, if you if you just have something just like in your face, I remember back when they were discovering like just exploding blood packets there was one called the wild bunch or even bonnie and clyde mm. when it was like they were being shot up with those bars and you know that so and that was <laughs> that was a lot of gore and like wow that was that was interesting and you and you think okay i've had it with gore or whatever I, you got got my got my fill when i was in college uh and so that's kind of out there but then as you say there's some that are so subtle that the cool guy the 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 way he phrases it and justifies himself and his agenda is is you come away thinking wow you know maybe maybe the bible's a little too hard on that or mm-hmm. yeah that i need to lighten up or oh i really ought to jump on that bandwagon and the next yeah. thing you know you've lost your lost your it's just so strong um and and so in the right hands it can be very very compelling as well mm-hmm. uh but yeah i just i just think of all the places that that you have danger you have danger in business i i I knew a fellow once who was a godly fellow and he was in our church and um, without going into details he sold some pretty high-powered stuff to like entire buildings in chicago and we were after church one night talking about we had pizza our family did and 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 i said what'd you do this week and said well you know i was doing this this and this and i had to create a situation and you think, what do you mean create a situation? <laughs> he said, well, the guy was dragging his feet, the purchasing agent. He knew they needed it. They did need it. And so I told him the prices were going up, let's say October 1st. And so he got off, you know, his seat and <laughs> bought the stuff and they were better off. I'm better off. And I said, well, what's the situation? Well, they really weren't going up October 1st. Mm. So that whole realm can Lying. be dangerous, yeah. you know? Yeah, for sure. So wherever you go, it's dangerous. Mm. So guard your heart. But the uh, the arts are are so, I don't know, and, and so delightful. I mean, it's really, it's, it's interesting. There's a guy named Arthur Schopenhauer who said... Um, he was a German atheistical philosopher, and he said the big thing about about the, the universe is just will. Man is just willing and grinding and going along. And he said the arts were a Sabbath, where you can go in and you can listen to the symphony, or you can you can go to a gallery or something, or go up in the Alps and see architecture of chalets or what have you. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's a restorative to the soul. Well, we have a Lord's Lord's Day, a Sabbath. One of our guys, Ricky Stark, actually wrote a dis- dissertation comparing the two Sabbaths. Hmm. But I, I will say, sometimes in the grind of a city and a trip, I was at the American Philosophical Association in Philadelphia <clears throat> in, uh, 19, in 2020, and um, a lot of argument about CRT and whether this, 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 and that, and you've got the caucuses for various strange groups and the like. Mm-hmm. And to slip away and go down to the... Uh, uh, to the, a couple of different art museums there, the Philadelphia Academy, and to just look at a Thomas Eakin painting or, or a Benjamin West and browse in the bookstore and turn through something. It was just like, you know, so a lot of it is just, it's just 
contemplation. You just love it. it it's, it's a little bit like, hey, I'll just take a walk in the forest. Mm. And that's aesthetic. Sauntering is walking along. And, and they're restoratives to the soul, too. Yeah, yeah so appreciating it, beauty. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. And by the way, the people who are like contemptuous of, of the of the folks who like go slumming, like, oh, you you know that movie or whatever, mm-hmm. like, uh huh. But I have been reading Hind's Feet in High Places or something, so I had a better afternoon. Um, and sometimes you say, oh, you're you're just a Pharisee, and like, you know, there's a place to be careful. They may, you know, you, you can all talk, you can talk fine art and all this stuff, and I'm above it all, and so I'm not affected. You may very well be. Look, I went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame once. I was I was speaking in a church for the Ohio Convention. I think it was in Parma. Mm-hmm. And I had a, a late flight, and so I went up to see the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And so they have a section there where they mock people who mocked rock and roll. So they have an old preacher, you know, you got the little report placards behind, you know, yeah. attendance last week, and, and he's probably got a little skinny black tie, and he's breaking records, you know, and yeah, I've seen that's the devil, the devil stuff, and, you yeah. know, or one guy's like throwing them over the bridge, and and like, oh, these pathetic people, you know, because yeah. this is the cool Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And then you go to the exhibits, and like, okay, here's the thing that Jimi Hendrix died in, or here's what so and so got shot in, or here's where he vomited up his kidneys, and mm. and uh, you know, here's a guy who died at 22. And you think, I think I'm going to go back to the preacher with the, you That's know, right. breaking and, the records. <laughs> breaking yeah. the records. It's like, no, there really is a lot of crazy danger mm. in these things, and so to be easy breezy about it, and to laugh at anyone who has reservations shows that you really don't know the power of it. However. I'm telling you what, there's danger in everything I've gotten into in in my life. And yeah. I mean, even even the military, I will say this, I've, I'm a teetotaler. I mean, some people think, you know, I've worked with people who drink some wine and they're Christian and all that. Okay. But I've just chosen to be that. It scares me to death. It's so, to me, it's so dangerous. To me, it's like bungee jumping. I'm afraid I would, <laughs> I would say, oh, that's a buzz. And then, you know, something goes bad. But at any rate, um, in the military, you know, in the officers club, they might like, everybody's got their mug, you know, and like, okay, we're toasting so-and-so. Or if you take Hill number 327, you know, your platoon's first, you got a case of beer. So it's just, it's a culture of that. When I worked for the National Endowment for the Humanities, uh, and Vanderbilt University, you know, a lot of times they would say, okay, for this particular event, you need to go to the package store and get some, get some brandy or something for the reception and the like. And it, it was just kind of a wash with the graduate student Christmas party. Everybody, you know, free beer, mm-hmm. here, let's kick. And so to me, that's a dangerous thing. And yet I go into the largely non-evangelical philosophy department at Whedon, I mean at, at Vanderbilt, in a culture of drink and a culture of swearing and a culture of sometimes adultery, what have you. Mm-hmm. Same in the Army. And yet I think I'm supposed to be conversant with the military, with philosophy, with the arts, with business to some extent. And so we we need to gird up our loins, but I, I just don't think it's always just run away, run away. Yeah, I mean, and that's something that, I mean, we can see, especially in our modern day, we compare so much to the first century, right? Yeah. The first century was like this and like this, and right. the fall of Rome, this is how this happened, that's the United States, and, yeah. you know, so on and so forth. Um, and so... It's been a, it's it was early at least for me in my walk of being trying to be in film and entertainment yeah, yeah, industry yeah. in California and, right. and then coming to faith and then realizing well there's no way I could do this hmm. and and in fact I'm very very thankful I I, I did not I stopped pursuing right, it but right. um, at the same time it's it's the culture right and so there is a fact of like yeah you don't need to see every movie and read every book and go to every museum and whatever right. and listen to every pop song and right. and all the rest but and i and i'm trying to train this with my children i think a lot of people are especially more to, nowadays right is just seeing you need to at least see it you need to have the glasses on yeah. and understand not like you're holding up the bible physically right and yeah. quoting verses but you need to see like what's going on in um uh little mermaid or even I remember we watched Zootopia a few years mm-hmm. back. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I couldn't stand it for more than two or three minutes. Yeah, I no. had to just get a notepad, and I was just, no, just yeah. and it wasn't even, I wasn't even intending to originally. Yeah. It was just like, this is so bad. This it is, is crazy. So bad. And it just, yeah. it just, and some of it's over the top, yeah. but sometimes it's so subtle 
that it sneaks in because again, music, uh, film, um, poetry, and so on, yeah. art and and painting and whatnot, it sneaks in in a different way. Especially if you're singing a song or God's created all these wonderful things, and He'll sometimes, I mean, people will use it yeah. for His glory, but also for for man's glory. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so yeah. knowing about it and at least seeing it and appreciating that's why i love you know something like aesthetics and something like just yeah. having an understanding of yeah. of the arts yeah. you know maybe you don't need to know everything but hey lord of the rings you know i know a lot of people who love the books hate the movies and so on yeah. but they're still beautiful movies yeah. and like you said with yeah. Gollum and uh smeagol and and just yeah. that sort of thing and the triumph of good yeah oh, but there's violence oh he yeah. said the he said a bad word yeah. and it's like well i mean like you said you want to be amish i guess that's fine but yeah. Don't hold that against someone, right. especially if you're trying to converse with the world, you yeah. know, and yeah. not to say you be of the world, of course, but be in it. Sure. Uh, in, and, you know, you got that book, it. Christ and Culture by H. Richard Niebuhr, and he says there are yeah. these different motifs Christians have used. Christ against culture, big, firm separation. Uh, first, second, third or order separation. Sometimes it's fundamentalism or Anabaptist, Amish. And then you have the Christ of culture. It's like the Unitarian, mix it all in. It's mm-hmm. all. Then you have the Christ... Uh, in culture and paradox, uh, you're kind of darned if you do, darned if you don't. I mean, uh, the Lutheran sort of thing, and then Christ uh, above culture, sort of the Catholics determine what the culture will be in Rome or what have you. Mm-hmm. And then the Christ, uh, the transformer of culture, which they see more as a reform thing. But I, I like when we, it, it's, it's Southern or Midwestern, when we would bike across Iowa as part of what's called Ragbri, Reg, Rag, Register, Des Moines Register Annual Grape bike ride across Iowa, we would we would go like 500 miles in, in seven days. Mm. Starts on Sunday morning. We have jerseys on with Christian stuff. We have laminated things to hand out to witness. And there we are in spandex on Sunday morning uh, riding through <laughs> Iowa. Not going to it's church. It's like it's the Lord's Day. And breaking, like, you know, breaking Bibles and records. No. You know, and it's just, oh, <laughs> man. Or even the National Guard. I mean, I would we would have drill on Sunday morning, and yeah. I'd be down there planning doing rack control training or looking at maintenance of machine guns. And it's like, what am I doing? And it's sort of like we're, we're amphibians. We're, we're in the mm. world and uh, to withdraw totally from it. But I do think, by the way, I use all of those five motifs in something. I, I don't drink, Christ against culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm glad Christ above when uh, the Chicago metro system, uh, the CTA, has like poetry month and they have something from Song of Solomon or whatever up there. Mm. I'm thinking, okay. That's good. Uh, in in paradox, well, you go down the line, and I think like uh, Silent Scream, anti-abortion film. If we can hack away at the incidence of abortion, it's it, there. There are different callings, different angles, and we need to be careful about not spying out each other's callings and freedom. Yeah. But we can fool ourselves big time. Yeah. Uh, if you'll say, what's the old the old joke like? Oh, I just read Playboy for the articles or something. Right. Yeah, sure you do. You know. <laughs> You're, you're, or Jimmy Carter does an interview with Playboy when he's running. Like, he's yeah. Mr. Baptist. Like, what are you doing? Sometimes it's like, quit. And by the way, and there are a number of things where people think, how close can we fly to the flame? You know, like, mm-hmm. is that still... Am why? I sending... Uh, just get yeah. right up there. Why yeah. are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Yeah. You know? So, yeah. yeah, there has to... So you're basically saying there has to be a balance. Yeah. You have to be aware yeah. of things around you, yeah. but also have to be a balance. Right. And a lot of the phrases, by the way, I mean, even in ads, you'll say... The old lady who did the Wendy said, "Where's the beef?" I don't know if you remember that. Oh yeah, or, or the like. The 80s, but, yeah. Uh, someone will say, uh, "Run Forrest." Well, what's that from? I yeah, mean, from cultural Forrest, references. Forrest yeah. Gump or vote for Pedro. There's a sign. There's a shirt <laughs> from you know Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of the, the language, and particularly those Northwestern students. That's kind of the language that they speak, and mm-hmm. so at least knowing what it's about. Yeah. I had a terrible job once for Kairos Journal. And it was to write a review of um, Brokeback Mountain. Mm. And it glorified homosexuality. And uh, what was it? Heath Ledger was in it. And Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal. And Gyllenhaal yeah. was in it. And so I didn't want that job. Uh, but anyway, so I go to the afternoon show because you pay them less. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I had glasses on with a funny nose and a mustache or something. But no. <laughs> but I'm in there. and the it's, big hat. It was so, yeah, so awful. I mean, it was beautifully done. But what they do, <clears throat> they're up in the high Rockies doing their gay thing in the tent or whatever. And it just looked like a beautiful ad for 
the old ads for bush beer, something like that. It's all beautiful. And then they come back to the fever swamps of conventionality mm. of their spouses, the workday world. And I think they put like a, some kind of a yellow filter on the camera and the kids are snotty and they're knocking over displays in the, in the grocery store and they're, mm. they're hounded in their workplace. It's like, oh, the, the, the sheer Gehenna of ordinary conventional life. Oh, we're back in the, it was a cartoon. It yeah, was wow. so cheesy, but, uh, it, it's kind of fun to see how, uh, even like with, with whatever, I think the Zolander maybe or Zootopia, what you're talking about, how, Zootopia, how yeah. awful, how awful they do this stuff. By the way, it is, pardon the schadenfreude here, but it is, it is kind of interesting to see Hollywood self-destructing. I mean, they, yeah. the, the Oscars, they just get worse and worse and nobody wants to see these things and, and all the political correctness and. And, and they just have dead souls in many cases, mm. and they're turning out dead soul stuff. And now the theaters are going bust. The streaming, there's a lot of trash on there. But it turns out that less creepy, like BritBox or some of the stuff, is doing better than the darker stuff that Americans turn mm. out. So I think they're just writing themselves down into, like, the pit. Yeah. And so I, I think these are, like, promising days for Christian filmmakers. Look, there was there was a, a video here. There's a guy, um, Nick Searcy, I think his name is, and he's, he's a Hollywood actor. He's doing a lot of stuff. But he took the case of uh, the guy who was the terrible butcher um, abortion doctor in Philadelphia, um, uh, Gosnell. Kermit Gosnell, yeah. And so they crowdfunded it, and mm. they came and they showed it in Nashville, and he was behind wow. it. It was very powerful, very well done. It wasn't, and they didn't go into excess gore. They just would have the bags or something on the stairways of the mm. of the bodies, and yet it was beautifully done. And some of the best stuff is done now by people who are either Christian or they have a kind of root Romans two fourteen and fifteen sense of like yuck when yuck is proper and mm -hmm. like yeah when yeah is proper. And so I. I think it's kind of fun to watch Hollywood self-destruct. Yeah, it is. It is pretty. I mean, it just you know again shows the level of wickedness that eventually catches up with yeah, people, for lack yeah. of a better word. Um, when I when I worked at SBC Life, at the executive committee, they were really pushing a, a couple of things. One was Christie, which was um, I think it was based on based on Catherine. Um, oh, what was her name? Uh, Catherine Marshall's work, and it was about this. Christian girl in the mountains, and mm -hmm. she was a school teacher or something like this. Very wholesome, um, but it it was just kind of a little bit too hallmarkish. Or, I mean, you know, a little too precious, and they were pushing that really hard. And then you'll you'll take something like um, a, a thoroughly godless kind of sitcom. Let's just say like Friends or Seinfeld. And you just think, and and you know when Kramer comes sliding in and does it, and the the crazy stuff where Jerry's worried about this puffy sleeve shirt oh, or yeah. something, the pirate that shirt. It's yeah. like it's <laughs> so much fun to watch, and George is such a disaster. And you think, you know, why does the devil have all the good screenwriters? That uh, <laughs> so you you there is a sense in which you give the devil his due, and you say we need to go to school on somebody who has has pace and yeah. and and. Uh, character development and the like so but again at their heart they're just they're just dead being in la coming to faith pursuing film and acting and all right. that didn't get very far um but then all of a sudden thinking well this is a whole this is just wicked yeah. right i can't right. be a part of this right. and ultimately i did i did give it up by and large um but nevertheless and i'm thankful i did really because especially just anyway yeah. uh, <laughs> But those who are, I mean, I mean, if you look at something, if you follow the chosen, the TV yeah, yeah. series, all that, yeah. you know, and I will say, I mean, I think it's really well done. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one of the first things that I've seen. I know the Gospel of John that came out a number of years ago yeah, yeah, yeah. was was done well mm -hmm. too. Yeah, you know, the Passion of the Christ is, it, but it's a very very snippet. But most of the time, like you're saying, it's very kitschy, it's very corny, mm -hmm. it's bad acting, it's bad sound, it's bad the lighting, right. and so on. And really, I mean, I would commend people. You know, who may be watching this or just knowing somebody, um, 
to study, like you're saying, and and study because you know all truth is God's truth. This is, I mean, I like to compare Jesus as Jesus to reality. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. This is prime reality, and having that, then say, okay, I've got a desire to be the best architect I can be, or be right. be a be a uh, an author, or be a screenwriter, or something like that. Right. And do it, and especially yeah. in this context now, we've got crowdfunding, you know, digital stuff. You can right. digital video, um, and the like, and really just not rejecting it outright. Some people do, and yeah. that's fine. Yeah. But a lot of times, getting back into it, or even uh, especially with producing movies, mm-hmm. maybe you don't need to go to Hollywood, but you know, there's Austin, Texas. They shoot a lot of stuff in Georgia, yeah. even here in Tennessee, uh, and and a lot of places that you can still rejoice in God's goodness, yeah. the common grace that it is, yeah. and then produce good stuff. Yeah. And because then people see the stark contrast because yeah. you have literally dead Hollywood who's just literally shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah. And then you have, oh, that was a good movie. It wasn't campy. It right. wasn't kitschy. There were problems, but it wasn't overtly this or that. Yeah. You know, it wasn't overtly political or overtly raunchy or something. Absolutely. Uh, it's definitely... It's definitely a good thing. And humor is sure. a humor's a great thing. I mean, um, you know, it's not just grindingly serious. And then, I mean, what what was it? Um, well, I mean, I, I like sometimes I'll say to folks, okay, if you're going to take three movies on a desert island, you know, you've got a whatever it is, like a DVD player yeah. or something, and you, you're going to see it. By the way, I think sometimes in Chicago they had a station totally devoted to the Shawshank Redemption. Every time I turned the TV on, oh, that, was wow. play, that was playing. <laughs> yeah. But no, what would you take? And I, sometimes I think, okay, I might take Lord of the Rings. I might take Three Amigos or something like that. <laughs> We're able to laugh in a way. You know, we talk about the Divine Comedy. And, um, and, and how's it a comedy if it's the whole story? Well... A tragedy is like, oh, we're sailing along, you know, I'm the king like that, I'm Oedipus the king. Uh Uh-oh, tragedy, boom, you know. Mm -hmm. Whereas comedy is like, uh uh-oh, trouble, trouble, oh, Lucy, you got some splaining to do, you know. And then all of a sudden, oh, Lucy, Ricky, and the like. And for all the craziness of the thing, it's going to turn out great. And we ought to be lighthearted in a way, too. Mm -hmm. Um, I I remember... um, in our in our aesthetics book, uh, one of the guys, it was actually a Jewish writer, Jewish philosopher, talked about this girl who, um, she was a cub reporter. I think she just had a journalism degree, and they said she could have a full-time job if she could make one story interesting. And uh, uh, anyway, it was like the world meat shortage. And she's thinking, <laughs> what in the world? So she goes out at noon, she finds four guys on a street corner, and she says, excuse me, I need your, do you have an opinion on the world meat shortage? The American says, uh, what's a shortage? Uh, the Russian says, what's meat? The Chinese guy says, what's an opinion? The Jewish guy says, <laughs> what's excuse me? So, you know, you're typifying these folks. Okay, we're so cautious now that, you know, we, we don't want to offend and so yeah. forth and so on. But there's a lot to even just humor out yeah. there that Christians should cultivate. We need to push back. That's one way to push back against the culture of just sheer cancellation and sensitivity will shut everything down. We have uh, the First Amendment, you know, the right to express yourself, but now we have a new amendment, and so right to never be offended. Mm-hmm. And if we ever buy into, and quite apart from humor, from saying you can't offend anyone, then you be, you become the PR church. Yeah. And I'm 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 one thing about the arts, then you know they sometimes they push the edges a little bit, and sometimes that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, to be done. No, that's good. Yeah. Um, well, this has been this has been really good. We could probably talk. Well, I'm night. talking to a real artist here. I, you know, <laughs> I just I'm just an old guy. Who just talks, but you've been you've been uh, you're making this and uh, um, well, I appreciate and, that. And done things in uh, in Hollywood. So yeah. what do I know? Done things in Hollywood, <laughs> quote unquote. Uh, what are a couple of books? Uh, I mean, a lot of people um, who may see this, you know, probably on the younger side, maybe not, but and but still kind of might be like me, especially early on. Well, I don't know about movies. I don't know about, you know, I should only read Christian books. I should only yeah. do Christian things. I should, even with education, you know, we think, well, i got to send my kids to a Christian college. Yeah. Now, I would say yeah. I'm, I'm all for liberal arts and, and um, classical education. We homeschool. Uh, but there also is a level of having to build that <laughs> and understand it. And the best way to, you know, one of the best ways to do that is reading. What are a few books, that you, you know, three or four 
maybe off the top of your head that you would say oh wow you know not something super scholarly but something that's very accessible or a few authors maybe that you would say hey wow. check these out uh what do you think wow you know by the way i love the and an anthology that we used where they talk about everything from the beauty of art and these higher visions of meta meta aesthetics but also just people talk about the humor of jokes about uh ruins about the look i mean taste and all kinds of things and even just photography so an anthology in aesthetics is good i mean you have people like c.s lewis writing on an experiment in criticism and mm -hmm. what makes a what makes a book good nancy piercy's done some stuff where she'll have uh kind of a survey of the arts we have we have some people who are i mean this i'm gonna i'm gonna say something really strong and roger scruton writes some I was different gonna people say, yeah. but one thing it strikes me i used to subscribe to sports illustrated and i remember their writing was so good that they could write about a um a, a curling team on an Indo indian reservation in north dakota as remote from my life as anything yeah. I would finish that article and want to move to North Dakota and buy <laughs> a fan jacket and follow the team that I think one of the best things you can do is just read good writing uh, or watch, just watch some really good films. I mean, you know, just the Frank, Frank Copper, Copper stuff. I mean, just, just watch, what, did, what how, do, how do they capture you with It's a Wonderful Life or Mr. Smith Goes to Washington or, you know, why, why is it that... Um, I don't know the movie Gandhi or something. I mean, what what is it? Even though it's, as some books have said, that's a miss. That's that's a, like giving Gandhi sainthood when he's not that saint saintly. Mm. But what is it about that or Lawrence of Arabia that is so? Watch the practitioners do their stuff well, and ask yourself why is it that that is so arresting. Um, one of the things about aesthetics, and we talk about beauty a lot, and the beauty is a wonderful sort of thing, certainly. I mean, the beauty of a rose or a sunset or, or what have you. But I think one of the hallmarks of aesthetics, aesthetic goodness is just it's arresting. Mm. It's fascinating as opposed to boring. What is it? I'm just reading um, uh, Saul Bellow right now, um, Seize the Day. He was. I've read a biography of him, and he was in Chicago and would write about Augie March and others thoroughly godless and, and, and the like. And yet, I just read a sentence about how this guy swigged down a Coca-Cola and then, um, you know, the way he covered his eyes uh, with this and that and winced and so forth and so on. In that sentence, the description is just so rich. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like, wow, this guy, this guy has such an eye for detail. So... In terms of just like you, you need to read this guy or this guy. I, I might just say, watch a really well crafted movie that is not disgusting. Hmm. Read a good article, and if a guy can write an excellent article in, you know, what have you, Sports Illustrated or ESPN the magazine or whatever your area is, why is it so good? Hmm. Why does it hold? Take you? note of what. Take note of good, what yeah. what is going going well. That's good. That's good. Well, I, lots lots. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, well, this has been a wonderful yeah, conversation. Yeah, thanks, Richard, for, sure. yeah. for asking. We'll do it again. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, well, again, thanks so much for tuning in and um, comment and like. Appreciate that and share it with your friends. All right. Until next time. Take care. Thank you. You're very soul. <laughs> <laughs>